this is an intro to the Clojure programming language. And um, the reason we wanted to do this presentation is that we wanted uh, everyone to have uh, a little bit of uh, background in what this language is and just sort of, sort of looking at how it compares to uh, more traditional programming languages like C++ and Java and, and stuff that most people might be more familiar with. Um, so I, I'm going to assume some sort of programming knowledge, really, just maybe you having worked in Java or C++ or something like that. Um, but I'm not going to assume that you know anything about closure or functional programming or anything like that. So I'm just going to sort of take this from very, very the ground up and try to build up towards actually sort of some more uh, higher level concepts. But we're going to start very, very, very low on the pile here and basically talk about the very fundamentals at the, at the start. Um, now, Clojure as a programming language is a, um, it's a language that actually sort of runs on multi multiple different hosts. Uh, it runs on, uh, the most popular host that it runs on is that it runs on the JVM, uh, like on the Java Virtual Machine with um, full access to the Java Development Kit and, and Java functions that is shipped with that. And it also runs on uh, JavaScript, so it, it um, will have access to the JavaScript runtime that's available in a browser or in Node or, or whatever. Um, and um, it's also available to, to run on a, a bunch of other different kinds of environments. You can run it on .NET and, and stuff like that. But the JavaScript and Java uh, runtimes are the two main uh, sort of mostly supported targets for, for Clojure. Um, we use Clojure in the default team to build the new editor. Uh, and I'm going to talk mostly about the Java version of, uh, of uh, Clojure uh, to, to try to cover that. Um, so what I'm going to do is just show you a little bit of how to get started here and talk a little bit about how, how to set up a small development environment to, to, to get going. And then we're going to use that development environment to talk a little bit about the, the language itself and its features. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to be using a development environment called Cursive, uh, which is uh, a closure specific IDE that's developed by a single person. And it's basically running as a plugin into IntelliJ. So um, to run this, you need the community edition of IntelliJ. And you need to install the Cursive plugin into that. Um, and the, com the community edition of IntelliJ, you can just download and uh, it's from, from JetBrains, and it will essentially allow you to, um, to do this kind of development. It's fine to, to use for, for, for this purpose as well. The license allows you to, ru to run it in, in a corporate setting. You just don't get support for, for, um, from JetBrains and stuff like that. And there's a bunch of different features that are not available in the IntelliJ uh, environment that's not available in the community edition. But they're mostly uh, aimed at sort of enterprise work anyway. So, so you're not really losing out on any, any features that you would be too interested in. Now, Cursive can be downloaded from, um, uh, it's called cursive-ide.com. Uh, and I've already downloaded this and installed it. Um, so I just wanted to show you that it's here. Um, and IntelliJ is, of course, downloadable. The community edition is downloadable from uh, jetbrains.com slash idea. I don't really know how to pronounce that, but let's go with that. Um, and here we go. I have IntelliJ installed here. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to sort of lose that and start uh, create a new product from scratch uh, to, to, to work inside. And when you're working with, with uh, uh, Clojure, there's a, a sort of a build system similar to what you might sort of look at um, the various build systems that are available for Node or maybe something like you can compare to make, I guess, on, on, on the C side of stuff. Um, maybe you can compare it to ant, something. Uh, but the, the thing that we use for building in uh, Clojure is called lining and, <laughs> um, and I think I just had to Google it. So it's available at li lining.org. Um, this is supposedly some sort of fictional figure that fought ants or something. At some, I think it's a folklore thing. Uh, but what we're going to do is uh, essentially what you need to do to get started with Clojure is just to follow these steps on, the, on this website. You, it will install a small command line tool called Line, which allows you to initialize a, you know, start a new clo Clojure project and, and have something that you can basically build from, from scratch, you know, a hello world thing from, 
from that. It will also sort of be responsible for downloading Clojure itself, like the environment that you use to actually develop. So we use this for, for a lot of stuff. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to create a new lining and app here. I'm not sure that's visible. I'm just going to move this up a little bit and maybe just clear here. And what, what you can do is just type uh, line, new. And then you have a bunch of different templates that you can use. There's like application, which is called app. And there, that will create a template for a command line application. There's a bunch of other ones, like creating libraries and stuff like that. But this is uh, probably what you want. So I'm going to do, call this, um, I'm just going to create a new lining and application called tutorial here in my uh, working directory. And this will generate a new directory that contains a bunch of stuff. Uh, essentially, it starts you off with uh, there's like a git ignore and uh, there's a license and a small uh, hierarchy of, of directories that uh, you can that contains like a starting point, basically like a hello world thing. And if you type, uh, you can now s just go into this directory and type line run, and it will run your, it will compile and run that application for you. So there we go. It just types hello world. Uh, now, Lining is responsible for sort of downloading dependencies. It will download Clojure for you. It will download any dependencies that you configure to download. Um, and the, the um, dependencies them themselves are specified in this project CLG file. So if, let's see. So it basically contains information about the dependencies that you, that you want to include. And I only have Clojure as a dependency here. I don't really need anything else for right now. Um, this also sort of includes uh, aligning also lets you sort of publish this. Uh, so if you're making a library for someone else to, to use, there's like a one line command that just sort of pushes that to uh, like deploys a new version of that uh, or releases a new version of that library that you're working on. But we're making an application there and we're just starting from scratch. So um, I'm going to be sort of, I'm going to open this into in, in cursive. Uh, and let's see, let's open the project here. And let's go there. I call it tutorial, didn't I? I'm just gonna do that and open that as a project. New window, thank you. Uh, and if you look at the hierarchy here, you can see that I have a source file, some tests, and um, Basically, it, it sort of starts you off with uh, a bunch of different stuff. The, the target folder here contains just like the output of the build. Uh, and there's a sor corresponding source, and there's a corresponding test as well. So there's a, there's a test names uh, file that contains unit tests if you want to, to do that. I'm just going to open this to sort of look what, what's in there. There's just basically a print line, hello world thing. That's what you get and, and, uh, from f uh, an empty application. Uh, I'm actually going to start a new module here. I'm just going to ignore this and, and create a new module. Uh, I guess new and closure namespace. And we call this uh, we call this fundamentals because we're talking about we're going to be talking about some fundamental stuff here. Um, right. So the way I'm going to do this or at least try to do this is I have this other computer here which I will <coughs> sort of look at. And I'm going to type stuff in here and, and um, try to sort of explain what's going on while I'm doing it. So bear with me. Now, I just opened this project in, in, in Cursive. And from the start, you don't really have any way of running the project. The first thing you need to do is sort of configure a, 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 a run configuration. So this is similar to like in Visual Studio, you have a run configuration called release or debug. Uh, you can add a bunch of different ones, but we don't actually have anything from the start there. So the first thing I need to do is to, to create one of those. Actually, the very first thing I need to do is to tell it which version of the JVM to use. Um, so I need to go into product structure, sorry about that, and configure this here to say I want to use Java version 1.8. Because if I don't do that, I get all sorts of strange error messages. Uh, so there we go. And I'm going to create a run configuration. and hopefully get back on track to where we were uh, earlier. I'm going to add. Uh, the, we're using a lining and project. So I'm going to create a, a lining and run configuration, which I'm going to call line run. 
and the argument is going to be basically run. The, you know, the same thing that I typed into the, the command line. Uh, now, this IDE, this cursive IDE, actually includes a, a debugger that you can use if you want to sort of step through your code. I don't tend to use it a lot, but, but if it's there if you want to use it. Um, and um, if you want to use the debugger, you need to check this checkbox here. And that allows the, you to run with the debugger. Otherwise, it will sort of fail to run the, the thing. So you can just check that uh, as, as per default for, for your run configuration. Uh, so we, we created a, a way to run the application. Um, and just sort of to hopefully this should work, I should be able to sort of select this from the dropdown here and press the play button or the debug button to start the application. And they will get the output. And you can see the output from the from the run there as well. You get hello world. So that works. Um, if there's any questions at any point, just raise your hand and we'll try to, you know, don't don't hesitate to, to ask. We'll try to do that. Um, I'm just going to add another configuration as well because I don't. I, I actually want to um, work in a more interactive way. So I want to sort of run code as we as we talk about it and sort of evaluate it on the fly. Um, so Clojure allows you to do that with uh, a function called um, a functionality called the REPL, which is a it's short for read evaluate print loop. Uh, and what it essentially does is it, you, you give it some code, it reads it, it evaluates it, and it prints the result of that code. So you can see what, what, it, the, what the, the code returned. And I'm going to create a, a local configuration. I'm going to call that line REPL, just because that's how I name things. Uh, now, this only needs to say this, run n REPL with lining n. You don't need to touch anything else, but you can uncheck this one if you want, uh, activate tool window, <laughs> which will prevent this little bottom bar from appearing when I, when I run the REPL, because I don't need that. Um, but that should do it. And uh, hopefully, if I press play here, I will get a prompt, or basically a, a, a REPL output window here. Uh, and what this is, is um, a way to communicate with, I've, I've started closure, the closure runtime now. And what I can do is I can type into this and evaluate things, and I will get an answer back. So I type into that, type some code, and press uh, Command Enter to evaluate it, and I get the response back here. 